Welcome to Granny's Legacy Patterns Binding Tutorial. We are going to be doing a binding today and I have just sewn up a little mini quilt just to use as a sample. And so to begin with, when you're going to be doing binding, I'll give you a few tips and tricks. The first thing you need to do is make sure your corners are square. If they are not square, take a roll ruler and mark with a marking pen or a pencil. Never use an ink pen. An ink pen can bleed when it's washed. So go around and make sure all four of your corners are nice and square. Now this one I can see is off. So when I put my ruler on here, and I'll turn it so you can see it in the camera, you can see that it is not square. So I'm going to mark that side and I am going to use my mark when I stitch along there, not the edge of the quilt, because that is not square. And when I get to this corner, I have a nice square corner. So I've checked all four, score, all four corners, I've corrected that corner, and so now I'm ready for my binding. So to prepare my binding, I prefer a two and a quarter inch binding or a two and three eighths inch binding. You may like two and a half, you might like two, the same process we'll use for a double, a folded binding or a single binding. So we're going to be doing a folded binding today. So we'll start with stitching the strips together. So you can, um, to, to figure out how many strips, measure your length of your quilt and your width of your quilt. So your length times two. So if your length is 20 times two, that would be 40. If your width is 10 times two is 20, 40 and 20 is 60. You can always divide it by 40 because quilt binding with the width of fabric is 40 inches. So your length of your quilt times two plus the width of, width of your quilt times two, add those together and whatever you get, you divide it by 40 and that's how many strips you need to cut. So I know for this quilt, I'll need over, I'll need more than one strip. So I've got two strips here, right side up. And I do not use the selvage, so the selvage is on here, but I'm gonna ignore that. So I have a half an inch over here and a half an inch over here because I do not want to use that selvage. I'm gonna put my presser foot on here. That's really a handy thing to have. And when you stitch these together, it's real handy to remember. We always stitch, if you think of this like a pair of pants, here's a pair of pants with two legs. You never wanna stitch through the crotch where the zipper would go. You always wanna stitch across the waist. Never through the crotch, always across the waist. That's how I always think of it. Cause oftentimes when you go to put these together, People will stitch this way and they'll realize their strips don't come out right. You need to cro stitch across the waist. So I'll put that under my presser foot and I'll find my, my foot feet here and just stitch right across there from one corner to the other. You may want to mark that if you're concerned about getting it straight you can mark it with your chalk pencil and then you need to go to your iron so first we will trim this at a, and you can double check to make sure you do it right by laying it out and see it worked out perfectly if i would have stitched it the other way i would have had a right angle so then i'm going to trim this to one quarter inch seam so just trim across there and then we go to our iron and we do some ironing so we will next go to the iron. Now, as we prepare for pressing, it's best to take your time when you're pressing and do a very careful job and get it exactly pressed in half. If you're sloppy at this part, your binding may not be as nice and professional as you would like it to look. So take your time and make sure you're pressing exactly in half and you press that strip all the way in half, all the way to the end. And sometimes you have yards and yards of binding. For us right now today, we're just doing this little mini quilt. 
so we won't have very far to bind and if you choose when you get to these little mouse ears you can trim those off I ignore them but you can certainly take and trim that straight so as you take your time and get your piece ironed exactly in half so if I were going to do a single fold binding rather than a double fold binding I would press over just one side a quarter of an inch but because we're doing the, the double fold, if you did a single fold binding, if you were gonna do a finer binding on a quilt, a little mini quilt and you wanted something finer, then you would want to use a, about a quarter, one and an inch, one, one and one quarter inch, you would want to fold over a quarter inch on one edge. So now we're our double fold binding, we have everything in half and we're ready to go to the sewing machine. So a walking foot is a must and get to know your walking foot. It's nice to pay attention to the lines on your walking foot. This particular line means it's one quarter inch to the, to in front of the needle, this one here horizontally, one quarter inch in front of your needle. You also need to know the one here is one quarter inch. This one is one quarter inch. So get to know your pressing foot. If your pressing foot does not have, your walking foot does not have these marks, get to know them. Maybe use a little ruler or a little black Sharpie and mark your quarter inch because this quarter inch in front of your needle is very important. It's also very important to use a walking foot because we have so many layers and you don't want to push away that top layer. Unless you have a machine that has a built-in walking foot, you'll want to prepare for a walking foot. So I'll remove my foot and put my walking foot on. When you put your walking foot on, you also need to know that the it has the little leg thing has to go on the screw. So all right, so I'm prepared with my walking foot. Where to begin? I always want to begin on a side where I I usually do the bottom of my quilt I start on. But here I'm going to use a longer side because it's so short of a distance between here and here. So I'm going to use the side and I'll need about 8 to 10 inches, maybe 12 where I'm going to join. So I'm going to start in about 8 or 10 inches, lay it on my quilt right along the quilt edge and now remember I marked this because it wasn't quite square so I'm going to ignore the quilt but go by my marking. The other thing I'm going to mark on every corner as I get to it I'm going to mark the very edge of the quilt so I am going to put a pin here where the edge of my quilt is. So if I had a ruler here, I'll get my ruler. I can put this ruler on here and I need a pin on the edge of my quilt. Okay, so we're gonna start and start stitching and go to the corner. And when we get to the corner, so now I'm a quarter inch from the edge of my binding, which is also a quarter inch from in from the edge of my quilt. So as I start stitching, I'm going to come up to this corner and I am going to stop exactly one quarter inch from the corner. So here, here's the edge of my quilt. I want to stop one quarter inch in. So as this line here on my walking foot gets to the pin, I will slow down and get exactly to that and then back up a few stitches. Okay, and then take your quilt out and turn it. And now you need to pull it out a little ways and pull your binding back so it's exactly straight here. So if I were to put my ruler on, you would see that I'm making a continuous straight line here with the edge of the quilt. So my binding is going back exactly straight. And I, where I quit sewing is right there. So then I'm gonna take and just finger press that a little bit and I have, and then I'm gonna pull this forward and the back fold is gonna be exactly on the back edge 
of my binding or the quilt. Now remember this wasn't square, so I'm not going by the quilt, I'm going through by my chalk marking. So I make a perfectly square corner there. So once again, pull it back. This should create a straight line. Finger press this, make sure that this is pulled back clear to that last stitch that you put in. Finger press, bring it forward, and make everything nice and square. This is square, this is square, and this continues to be square with your quilt. If you need to, you may put a fine pin in here to hold everything in place while you go back to your sewing machine, and you're gonna start stitching right on the edge and keep going forward. So as we come in here, we're gonna quarter inch from the edge again. I'm gonna just start stitching, and I'm gonna go to the next corner. And we're gonna do this four times, so you'll get good practice. So as we come to this corner, I remember I'm gonna put a pin right on the edge where the edge of my quilt is. And if you need to use a ruler to find that, you can lay your ruler on here and put your pin in exactly where that edge of that quilt is. So quarter inch all the way. Now we're not sewing to that pin, we're sewing a quarter inch in from that pin. So we're sewing to here, one quarter inch in from that pin. We're sewing not to the pin, but we're stopping one quarter inch short of the pin. So clear to there, and I use my walking foot as my guide. When I get to the pin, I back up and turn. Now as I turn, once again, the binding goes back to create a straight line. I make sure I fold this clear back to that last stitch taken. Put a little finger press in there, fold it forward. And the, it's very important that this back fold is equal to the back, this last side of your quilt that you stitched. So this is square. See how those folds are exactly right? This is square with the back of your quilt. This is square with this side. So three sides squared makes a perfectly square corner on your binding. And we're back to stitching. And it's important if you've got to keep your binding, you know, pull this, don't pull so tight that you wrinkle your binding, but you want to keep this nice and taut as you go so that your binding doesn't get wavy. So now we're coming to the corner again. And as we come to the corner, once again, we're going to mark that. So I'll lay my ruler on here. And then we'll put the pin in exactly on the very edge of the quilt. And I stop one quarter inch before the pin. So I'm gonna stop back here one quarter inch before the pin. So here we go. I'm gonna use the mar markings on my walking foot because I know that's exactly a quarter inch. From my, they line up with the pin. Back up. Now we'll do this corner. We're gonna get very good at perfect corners. They're all going to be perfect. So we pull it out. This binding lays back so it's straight with this edge. It's pulled back clear to that last stitch. Finger press that corner. Fold it back down again. This edge is folded exactly in line with this side of the quilt. The two corner folds match up exactly right. This side is exactly with this side of the quilt, and if you need to put a little pin in there, you certainly can. It's always nice to have a little pin to hold things where you want them to be. Get that under your presser foot, a quarter inch seam allowance, and write down that last leg. So now when I get to these little mouse ears, I ignore them. I, they do not bother me. Um, you can trim them off. It's certainly nice to trim them off too. So as I come to this corner, I'm going to once again mark that last edge with a pin. Put a pin in there. 
Years ago, Katie and I had a pattern that taught this binding technique. We'll have to get that reinvented. So one quarter inch from the pin, I'm gonna back up. Oh, don't tell me I lost bobbin thread. There you go, out of bobbin thread. We'll switch that bobbin quickly and be back in business here. So I'm to the last corner. I've replaced my bobbin, so I'm good to go. Back up one quarter inch from the end. Pin out, turn. Remember, fold it back so it's parallel or it's exactly in line with that last corner. Fold, bring it forward. And I've got a perfectly square corner here, here. Everything's lined up perfectly. Now I'm getting to where I started. And when I get back to where I started, I don't want to get too close because I really need space in here to make this seam. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to back up and stop. We've completed our four corners and we've got our two loose legs. So where we began our quilt, we're gonna lay that down first. So we lay that down, and if you need to put a little pin in it and keep it straight and neat and even, that's a good idea. And then the, where you finished, that's gonna fold right over the top. Just ignore this because this is gonna be out of the picture. So we lay this one right over the top, and if you need to put a pin here to keep it all even, then you're gonna wanna mark one, in the middle of where you stitch. So I ended stitching here, I began stitching here. So somewhere in the middle of those two, I'm gonna make a mark. So I've got a mark here on the top layer. I'm just gonna pick it up and make another layer mark on the bottom layer, right above, one right above the other. They're in the exact same spot. So then we're gonna take, and we're gonna think about the bottom one. This is the piece that we started stitching. We started here. This one, if you're driving down the highway and you see the yellow triangle or yellow square that says right turn, your strip that you started with is going to take a right turn. So does that look like a right turn? And here's our chalk mark. So I'm gonna complete that chalk mark right there. So this is the fold and this is the mark I marked with one layer right on top of the other. So this is the other one that was laying on top. It's just going to reach down and lay right on top. We're not going to do anything else. We're just going to lay that right on top and then just lift up that bottom and put two pins in. So that's laying on top. We're going to put a pin and sometimes you have to fold your quilt up a little bit here. Let me get a pin. We're going to put a pin here on this side and a pin here on this side and we know everything's square and nice because we've got our X's here and this follows this X, this follows this X, this is right on top. Now we're going to unfold that and lay it right over, right over the top and we're ready to stitch. And when we stitch, we're going to stitch across the waist. We will not stitch this way through the crotch. Remember, if we think of this as a pair of pants, you do not want to switch stitch right through the crotch. You want to stitch across the waist. So we're going to stitch from this point to this point. So I've got my pin up here pointing the, this is where I'm going to begin. So I can't make a mistake. So I'm going to bring this to my sewing machine and this gets kind of tight. So you kind of just need to fold your quilt up and get it over to the sewing machine and then stitch across the waist. So I'm just gonna start here and stitch right down from one point to the other point, from one V to the other V. So I'm stitching right through, straight through, and we're hitting that X right through the middle. And you can't see the X because the front sides are together, but we're stitching that right together now it's always a, guy, a good idea to take your pins out and make sure your project did, your stitching did what it accomplished. So I open that up and look at there. It's exactly perfect, just like I wanted it to be. So now I'm going to trim this seam, quarter of an inch. So I'm going to trim those legs off. And 
and I just finger press that seam. You can get your iron and get that ironed, but I only finger press that. So I lay it open. Well, I try to lay it open. It's just misbehaving today. So you want to flatten that seam open so you can just take your fingernails and make that flat seam. all the way and then it's going to fold exactly on the fold where you had it before and you can see those chalk marks match up perfectly. We're going to finger press that and that is absolutely perfect. Now we just have to finish that stitching on that side so a quarter of an inch. It's so simple. where I begin and we will see that that beginning and ending was just perfect. Now let's look at our corners. So when you go to bind these corners, sometimes it helps if you just nip the corner off a little bit to get rid of some of that bulk so your corners aren't so heavy. Don't, don't cut into your binding. but. As you lay that over, you have an absolutely perfect corner. And when I'm at home, I take my rotary cutter and my ruler, and I go around the entire quilt a quarter of an inch if I have a small binding, and I trim this all exactly straight. And when I, w when I go to the back to sew that binding down, you get an absolutely full stuffed binding that's absolutely perfect. And every single corner turns exactly how it's supposed to be, an absolutely beautiful corner. So when you turn this over, now see this one hasn't been trimmed to a quarter of an inch, but let me show you if I trim this. When you turn this over and you're stitching down, it should make an absolutely perfect corner as you come around. This corner and this corner should match exactly. Should make a beautiful corner. So every corner for you will turn out perfectly. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Every single corner when flipped turns into a perfect corner. So single foam binding, exactly the same. Find the middle, fold it in half, and do the same method. You need to have the, the binding folded in half with the same method. So that is a perfect stitched binding. Thank you for joining us at grannyslegacypatterns.com.